this is all your fault, Remy. No, it's yours. Oh, yeah, well, whose idea was it to stow away in the first place? How was I to know they'd search your lifeboats the first night out? All I know is it's a hell of a way to get to Europe. Look on the bright side. We'll be the fittest recruits ever to enlist in the Belgian army. Yeah, if we don't die of exhaustion first. You wanted to get out of Mexico, didn't you? And you wanted to go to Long, and you said that... Hey, wait a minute. I know that dress. Henrietta! I'm sorry, do I know you? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Mindy. I met you on the dock at Veracruz. I'm sorry. I'm not acquainted with any deckhands. Indy! We are on our way to fight the war! And war and women never mix! Get ourselves a ride to Dublin. Come on. Well, this is certainly more colorful than Mexico. That's for sure. Well, we made it. Welcome to Great Britain, Indiana. <laughs> I thought this was Ireland. It is. An ancient part of the United Kingdom. Rule Britannia. Do we enlist here? No, for that we go to London with the ferry. It's only a few hours. Look, Rumi, I don't mean to be a sourpuss, but we've got no money for the tickets. Money? Pooh, we'll get the job. And in one or two weeks at the most, we'll be in England. You'll see. Kind of a job. What does it matter? <laughs> we are in Dublin's first city where the girls are so pretty. Well, maybe a few days here won't be so bad. <laughs> Bring back the answers. Quick now. You'll fight for Catholic Belgium, all right. But you won't fight for Catholic Ireland. You bloody fiend, you... Delaney. What? Oh, no. Excellent performance. What's a Fenian? A Fenian is an Irish Republican. Jones. Careful. Mind you don't spill any. You'll end up like the last barman here. The last barman? Join the army. Or you get blown to smithereens. Jones. loaf of bread you can find. Butter, meat. I must have some meat. What kind? Any kind, I don't care. Ham would be nice. Two shillings, that's not enough. That's all we can afford. Gotta take it easy, we'll never get out of here. See you later. And eggs, bring back some eggs.
seat taken? There. Didn't I say you had to be an American? How did you know? Why, from your beautiful hat. Do you mind if I join you? Suppose we do. Sean, don't be such a grouch. You're more than welcome. Thank you. I'm Indiana Jones. I'm Maggie Lemass. Hello, Maggie. And this is my friend, Nuala. Hello. And this is my brother, Sean. Hi. Don't pay him any mind, Mr. Indiana. Indy. He's in an awful black mood today. Maggie, shut it. I will not. How long have you been in Ireland, Mr. Indy? It's Indy, just, just Indy. How long have you been in Ireland, Indy? <laughs> not long. So, kind of on a world tour. A world tour? Yeah. Sure he's one of them American millionaires. Well, in the seat back. Yes, sir. Um, a pot of tea, please. Tea for one, is it? We've just finished ours. But we wouldn't say no to another cup. Um, make that tea for four, please. And some cake, sir? The cream cakes here are just grand. And some cakes, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. How many countries have you visited? Well, most of Europe and Africa, India, China. Isn't that where all the little boys wear pigtails? Well, not just the boys, the men too. <laughs> Holy Mary! And then just before coming here, I was in Mexico. Mexico? Yeah. I thought there was a revolution going on there. Well, there is. I took part in it. Rode with Pancho Villa. Pancho Villa? Really? Well, yeah, he's a great guy. We were buddies. What's their program? Program? The revolutionary aims. Well, it's kind of complicated, mostly to do with land. And their freedom. Well, obviously, but the thing is... Now, tea for four. That's fine, thank you. And some cakes? Oh, we couldn't. Haven't we had more than enough already? Yeah, no, then we... Well, perhaps just one of the little creamy ones. And a chocolate eclair, if you're twisting the arm. And a couple of the little custardy ones with the twiddles on top. And the yellow one with the slices of mixed fruit inside. So, eat up. Thanks for the wonderful tea. You're welcome. It's grand. That's a funny-looking army. They don't even have guns. Well, they're just the Irish volunteers, or else the citizen army. What, some kind of national guard? No, they're Fenians. They tried to overthrow the British rule. Really? Sure, nobody takes any notice. They're silly fellas. A joke. But don't tell Sean I said so. Maggie! Just a minute. Will I see you again? Yeah, yeah. I, I hope so. There's a matinee at the Tivoli Theatre tomorrow. I'll be there. Grand. Maggie! Come on. I'll see you tomorrow, Indy. Okay. Bye. All of it? The two whole shillings? I couldn't help it. There was this girl. She was so pretty. But I'm starving. I did save you this. I need some real food. I know. I have to get some more money. Come on. Get dressed. Let's go to work. Girls.
together now. When Irish eyes are smiling, sure it's like a morning spring. In a little of Irish laughter, you can hear the angels sing. When Irish hearts are happy, <laughs> Thanks for taking us. My pleasure. What'll we do now? There's a dear little tea shop around the corner. Oh, I'm sorry, but I really have to go. Really? Yeah, I've got an appointment business. It's, it's real important. <sighs> what a shame. Yeah, yeah, well, that's business, I guess. But I'll see you again. Promise? Promise. Bye. Such a good-looking fella. And so free with his money. Who wouldn't you be if you're an American millionaire? Ginger beer and point of shandy in a couple of minutes. Irish hearts are happy. Where'd you hear that? At the theater? Don't you mean the music hall? I guess. It sure wasn't it. Sung by a brat of a boy with a bunch of shamrock in his coat and a shillelagh in his hand. And didn't he wish he had top of the morning, a top of the morning? What's wrong with that? Everything. Why? Because it's a phony and a lie. It's the kind of thing that makes us a laughing stock. Look at the Irish. Aren't they a scream? Well, gee, I just... I... Makes my blood boil. Why, because you're a writer? Because I'm an Irishman. Maybe a writer, too. Oh, you like the theater? Well, yeah. Do you owe much? Well, not as much as I'd like to. Meet me outside. Tomorrow at three o'clock, I'll take you to the Abbey. The Abbey? Is that, is that some kind of a church? No. Some might think so, but no, it's a theater. Our theater. Thanks, I'd like that. Oh, get along. And don't forget those drinks. Oh, thanks. God save all here. God save you kindly. You have good shelter here. She, the old woman, Kathleen Nahulahan. In other words, Ireland. Symbolic, you see. Yes, Prompt. Sit down. Sit down by the fire there and welcome. There's a hard wind outside. Have you travelled far today? I have travelled far, very far. There are few who have travelled as far as myself. Was it much land they took from you? My four beautiful green fields. Four provinces of Ireland taken by the English. Tell me something I can do for you. Tell me something I can do for you. You're not making sense. Speak clearly and with imagination. <laughs> no unnecessary move. Who's that? His nibs. The man himself. Director of the Abbey. Poet and playwright. Mr. William Butler Yeats. They'll be alive forever. They'll be alive. Forever. 
anyone for tea? Notes in the green room, please. Is that Sean O'Casey? It is, sir. I shall be pleased to see you, Mr. O'Casey, after I've spoken with the actors. Thank you, sir. What does he want to talk to you about? My play. <clears throat> Your play is challenging, Mr. O'Casey. You have a gift for characterization. I do not think, however, it is suitable for the stage of our national theater. You don't? It's too prolix, too discursive, and to my mind, too realistic. Too realistic? Well, your hero, Jack, he is a socialist, is he not? Political ideas are seldom dramatic. Even from the brilliant pen of Mr. George Bernard Shaw. So my play is a failure, then? Yes, but an honorable one. Pray do not lose heart, Mr. Casey. I shall be pleased to see more of your work. Indeed, I look forward to it. Yes, a definite gift for characterization. Thank you for allowing me to see it. Thank you for reading it, sir. And how did you find rehearsals? The play is fine. Mr. Jones? I agree with Sean. I like it. It came to me in a dream, you know. Really? A dream almost as distinct as a vision, as if from an invisible world. I believe poetical drama has no need of realistic setting, but only that which is legendary. You mean symbolic? Exactly so. Poetical, legendary, airy, fairy, owl, bollocks! He said he liked your play. He did not. He said it was challenging. Challenging. That's only one step up from interesting. The last bloody thing any writer wants to hear. We said the characters were great. Well, what would he know about us? With his bloody Celtic thorns and his Brian Baroos and his bloody Kathleen Nahulans. And when did Yeats ever look at, at, at a real person, let alone try and understand one? It came to me in a dream. Did you really hate his play? Ah, his play's all right. But it has nothing to do with Ireland now. It's a piece of ancient history. I want to write plays that stink of life. Real life. I want to rub people's noses in it, so maybe they'll get up and do something about it. You know, I want to... To hell with it! And to hell with William Butler Bloody Yates! Am I late? No, no, not really. Hello, Nula. Where are we going? Anywhere, I... Well, let's not waste a single minute. What is she doing here? Me? Sure, isn't she my very best friend? Well, yeah, yeah, and but Isn't I... she just dying to hear all about your fine adventures? Well, sure, but I just thought that for once... Nula, we... hurry up. We want to hear all about it, Indy. Right from the very beginning, you're not leaving out a single thing. Not all the places you've ever been to. Boys in America, the Indians in India, little pygmies in Africa. What about the men with the pigtails? Oh, yeah, but tell me what Breed Latin says. Breed Latin, do you know what she said to me? She came up to me straight after school. <laughs> Indy, come on into the water, it's gorgeous. Indy, come on into the water now. Come on in. <laughs> Jones, must be having you. Oh, 
coin of those drinks. Mmm. Come in. <laughs> well, if it isn't himself. Do you know him? Doesn't everyone? It's Indiana Jones, the American millionaire. <laughs> Ginger beer and shit. So, what do you say? Are you with us? Oh, I say you're idiot. Do you not want Ireland to be free? I want a socialist Ireland. Not an Ireland that'll be taken over by Catholic priests. Maggie! Maggie, I'd like you to meet my friend Remy. Remy, this is Maggie. Hello. Nice to you. And this is Nul. Enchanté. I'm happy to meet you, Nula. Indy has told me so many delightful things about you. Let's go and find some way of... Why'd you bring him? I don't know. I thought they might like each other. Where are they going? I don't care. As long as they leave us alone. What for? Come on. <laughs> when a play is good, it changes you. Changes the way you look at things. Changes the way you think. I thought it was supposed to entertain. It does, but not in a stupid, mindless way. Tom Mixer or Charlie Chaplin will do that for you in a damn sight better. Charlie Chaplin is great. He is a veritable genius in cinema. But theater, Indy, theater's live, which makes it dangerous. Dangerous? Not because the scenery will fall down, but because it's actually happening right here and now in front of you. The actors strip themselves naked, and that takes guts. The audience are part of it. They share. It, it, it's a ritual that's very old and very mysterious and goes right down deep into the roots of our experience. It, it has to do with magic. But when it succeeds, the thing happens which makes it dangerous do you see i never thought of it like that and do so now because at its greatest greatest moment theater becomes life and life becomes theater the cinematograph will never do that for you will i join you suit yourself i've got a message for you have you now? Now, here we are prattling on about theatre and how it can inform your life. Sean, it's important. If it's about the citizen army, you can tell the boys down at Liberty Hall I've resigned. Can we get some work done around here? Oh, I've got a message for you, too. Maggie says, would you like to come swimming tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. Did you tell her? About you working here? Nah. I wouldn't like to dispel her fine illusions. I'm leaving that to you. So, it's London next year after? Yeah, as soon as I could buy a ticket for the ferry, I'm going to join the Belgian army. And why would you want to be doing a foolish thing like that? Because this war has to be fought. Above all, it has to be won. The alternative is unthinkable. You're mad. <laughs> and why am I mad? Don't you realize that it's the wrong war? Oh, that's right. Maggie said you're a Fenian. What's so funny about that? Well, Ireland's already got home rule. British Parliament passed it. As soon as the war's over, you'll be free to govern yourselves. Govern ourselves? When we'd still have to swear allegiance to the English king and everything that means. And that's so bad? You're an American, and you can ask me that? Well, what about the Protestant loyalists in the North? Protestant, Catholic, North, South, it doesn't matter. We're all Irishmen. That's what counts. Well, suppose they don't agree. Suppose they want to stay with England. Well, then by God, we'll fight them too. <sighs> Ireland must be free, and the only way is the Republic. That's what I'm willing to fight for and die for if I must. Yeah, now you're the one who's mad. Yeah? Yeah. Says who? Says me. And now Sean's up again. The 
Listen, you're just a school kid. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's better than being a bird brain. Yeah, who's a bird brain? You are. Yeah? Yeah. Well, for one thing, it's... Come on in and get yourselves wet. We're leaving. But, Sean, I'm I said we're leaving. Yet. Come on. Now will you go away and give my head peace? But I say we need you. And I say you're mad, all of you. Look, you can't just desert us like that. Whatever you idiots are up to, I don't want to know about it! Sean! Sean! You're not gonna stop me from seeing her. Try it. Just so you know. Stay away from my sister! Or you get a puck in the eye! But the nuns are so terribly strict. They say powder and rouge are sinful. But I don't agree. Sure, it was only for a school play anyway. Have you, have you I saw... went up to Biddy after school. It was, the, it was the Monday, it wasn't... No, that's right, it was the Tuesday, because Biddy was after telling me after what Thank the nuns said. Thank you, Nula, would you ever wipe your... Do you remember that squinty I boy? Michael Fogarty. And do you what about, sir? Well... He went to America and he didn't get rich. Oh, His man told my man he was working every day that God sent. Thank you. Ah, oh, the Fogarty's are all gone. Oh, not Nell Murphy by the scruff of her neck screaming to the fullness of her lung capacity. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, look. Oh, would you look at the colour of it? It's totally gorgeous, Nula. What do you think? Indy, gorgeous. Indy, would you really look at this thing? Yeah, isn't it? Darling, can't you just see me in it? Look at the tea, isn't it divine? Must be the very latest thing. Oh. Wasn't the hat just grand? Yeah. And there's so many people. Sure, there are many ladies. And the ladies up there are so fine with the big houses and the servants and riding around in the shiny new motor cars. And there are places where they sell nothing but ice cream. Ice cream parlors. Any flavour you like, chocolate? Chocolate and strawberry, both at the same mm. time. Sure, it'd be enough reason to come back soon. What do you fancy, New Do you fancy a cup of tea? Well, good night, ladies. Don't say you're going. I have to work. Another important business meeting. Well, no, actually, it's. I... Ah, but it'll be something exciting. Well, it's more like I have. I know. A surprise. Listen, Maggie, there's something you need to know. I'm not a millionaire. I'm a waiter at Rooney's Pub. You're what? I'm a waiter at Rooney's Pub. I serve drinks, and then I collect empty glasses, and then I wash them. And when I've saved up for the ferry, I'm on my way. Good night, ladies. Andy! I am never, ever going to see you again. Guess not. Well, giving himself airs, and all along he wasn't nothing but a chance, sir. Such a lovely looking fella. <clears throat> I warned you, didn't I? So? Come on. They're going to fight! Close the door.
are we doing this? I forget. <laughs> Here's to the unpredictability of life. Sean, Sean, what I said about Maggie, I... Not at all. I've had to listen to her chatter all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Indy! I wish you those trees. Right! <laughs> <laughs> I've got the ferry tickets. So, you're off to London then? Yeah, first thing in the morning. And we have two shillings left over. London, here we come. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. You take care. Yeah. What time does the boat leave? First thing in the morning. You're pleased to be going? Aren't you? Yeah, but... Hey, what's that? Come on. Come on! Something's going on at the post office! Irish men and Irish women! In the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, summons her children to her flag and strikes for freedom! Well, oh, now, how should I know? Some kind of foolishness? They'll not be wanting postage stamps, that's for sure. Ask me, something's up. On an Easter Monday! <laughs> Don't be joking. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valor and discipline, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. This. Is it the kind of joke? Joke? I wish to God it was. But that's crazy. How can they hope to win? They're not looking to win. What they're looking for is a glorious defeat. Zens are insane. Are they? Ireland's always needed her martyrs. A blood sacrifice, that's what they're offering. Where life for one moment becomes theater. He understands. Please! Maggie, please go home! Please, they'll kill all of you. You can't do it. Maggie, don't! This is Ireland's big moment. I must be a part of it. <laughs> and Boland's mills. They're digging trenches up Stevens Green. Be God, they'll be fighting any minute. If it's fighting they're after, why don't they go to France? Listen, it started. I'm off. Hey, come here!
feet, all of you. Open the roof. Take those fire bombs with you. It stopped. The rebels have given up. They're surrendering. Where is he? I can't see him. Sean! 
Ready, arms. Take aim. Fire! Cup of tea, miss. No, no, thank you. Bad business. Executed. It's hard to tell. It's just rumors. Pierce, Clark, McDonough. Who else? Who else? McBride, Plunkett. Fourteen, I think. A lot of civilians and soldiers were killed in fighting. In, in the streets. Do the people still hate us? No. They say you're brave fellas. Patriots. Is that true? Since the surrender, everything's changed. The British have botched it. You're heroes now. <sighs> ah, it was worth it then. After all. Well, you'll be leaving then. Tomorrow. To join the British Army. Belgian Army. Well, I fought my war anyway. God bless Andy. God bless you, Sean. Try not to. Ah, the hell with you. Good luck. Will you be coming back? I hope so. Better take a good look then, because you'll never recognize her. Old Ireland's changed. Don't mix. It depends. Nuala was very charming. Yeah, but but I thought I was in love. That wasn't love. That was merely infatuation. How do you tell the difference? Time will teach you. Infatuation usually strikes you immediately. Poof! It hits you between the eyes. But it passes as quickly as it comes. And love? Love. Love is a tender plant. It has to be nurtured carefully. At first, you may not recognize it. You may not even like what you see. But it grows in thee. 
It grows and it blossoms. All it takes is time. And now, let us join those delightful looking young ladies. Oh, I thought that you said that we shouldn't. I didn't say we shouldn't enjoy ourselves. Gazing ye rosebuds while ye may. And quickly, the ferry docks in half an hour. Hello! Ladies, I would like you to meet my friend Indiana Jones. Fighting among themselves. I guess they need us. <laughs> hey, see that? Wait until we're in uniform, my boy. There is not a woman who can resist the uniform. The prestige of the uniform. We will have the pick of every girl in London. And then come on, and I'm Here. This is the recruiting office? And what did you expect? Belgium is a small country. Oh, come on. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, what can I do for you? We want to enlist. Are you sure it is the Belgian army you wish to join? Oui, oui, je suis belge. Ah bon, vous aussi belge? Oui, bien sûr. Hmm. Asseyez-vous. Belgian also? Oui. Mm -hmm. And your name is Henri? Henri de France. Henri. Défense. Name of father, Henri Défense also. Name of mother, Anna Jones. Your parents are not married? Oui. No, oui, oui, oui. Anna Jones Défense. Date of birth. 1891. So you're 25? No, 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 22. I was born in 1894. Not uh, very many people forget their birthday, Monsieur... Défense. You're the worst liar I've ever met. Welcome to the Belgian army. Sign here. All you had to do was to say, I'm Henry Jones, I want to join the Belgian army. I will take anyone. <laughs> Attention, attention, mes amis, messieurs, mesdames, English friends. I give you a toast. Rémi Baudouin, Indiana Jones, et la Belgique. À la Belgique. Good night. Indy, uh, Madame Suzette has invited me to go up to her apartment for a cup of coffee. She's a widow. Her husband was killed fighting Germans. A bit of luck, huh? Luck? Yes. She's been alone for two years. There is nothing like a widow. Monsieur Indy, will you come and join us for a cup of coffee? Uh... <laughs> No. Thank you, madam. I have to go to Oxford to visit my old tutor. All right, goodbye. You need to stay here and find a nice English widow. Tell her you joined the army 
and that you will be dead within the months and she'll deny you nothing. Excuse me. Yes? Do you know if I can get a bus here for Bayswater? I'm really not sure, ma'am. I know it goes to Paddington Station. Oh, I say. You're an American, aren't you? I simply adore Americans. Do tell me, what are you doing over here? I've just joined the Belgian army and I'm waiting to be sent to France. How brave and noble of you. My husband was at the front, but he was killed a month ago. Oh, darling. Really? I'm so sorry. Sweet of you to say so. Oh, is that the bus? Conductor? You go to Bayswater? That's right, madam. Step lively there. It's an awfully dark night. These beastly Zeppelins are coming over earlier and earlier. Hold very tight, please. Any fares, please? Please do allow me. Oh, thank you. One to Bayswater and one to Paddington. Two tuppence, please. And you might be interested in reading this. There you go. Thank you. Well, rare. What is it? A suffragette meeting. Disgraceful. Why didn't you come? Wouldn't do you any harm to learn about the problems of real women. How oh, dare you? Typical of these suffragettes. Always abusing and bully-ragging anyone who disagrees with them. Even a war widow. I'm sorry. I wish there was something I could do. How kind you are. One feels so lost and lonely. You're so beautiful, I wouldn't think you'd ever be lonely. Sweet of you to say so. Well, listen, I have an idea. What did you say you were getting off? Bayswater? Why don't I get off with you? I beg your pardon? I could come home with you. Maybe have a cup of coffee and then maybe... You must be mad. I don't even know you. Well, we could soon fix that. Well, you did say you were lonely. insulted in my life. Conductor, stop the bus. But I could be dead within a month. Taxi! shelter under that bus. Where's my hat? George! Oh, that was a close one. Do you think the bus is going to start? You're not thinking of going on, Miss Becky. Are you? Yes, of course. If the road's passed, we've got to finish our route. Oh, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> Go on, everyone. Are you all right? Yes, of course. If we give up every time a bomb falls anywhere near us, we're never going to win the war. Come on, 
Is that a bugle? It's all right. It's not sounding the call to arms. It's the all clear. No more Zeppelins tonight. So do you always give your passengers such an exciting ride? Oh, no. They don't all insult lady passengers and end up on the floor of the bus. I don't have to tell any of you, even those of you who don't believe in votes for women, how much we suffered for the cause. Prison, forcible feeding. Serves you right, you silly cows. That's all right. We didn't do it to impress you, sir. I tell you now, that battle is not over. Some people say, that while the war is on, we should suspend the struggle. They say that women should be content to work as sweated labor as long as it contributes to victory. But what kind of victory would that be that uses the starvation of women and children? What are you doing here? You invited me? I should have said for the men. You gave this to me? I call that an invitation after the war, even though the men returning from the front are unemployed. We aren't only fighting for votes for women. We are fighting for justice and democracy for everyone. If we are to play our full part this in building a better Bank world Shush. after the war, then it must be on equal terms, both men and women. My friends, we demand adult suffrage, not more, and certainly not less. Deeds, not words. Can we go now? Oh. From the East London Federation of Suffragettes, I would like to call on Maisie Kemp, Maisie, who is going to talk to us on the important subject of equal pay for equal work. Brothers and sisters. Sisters? Blimey, missus, you ain't I've got a large family. Miss <laughs> Pankhurst has asked me to speak to you today. Speak up, we can't hear you. She's asked me to speak to you today because I'm one of those women who, has ans who, who have answered the government's call to work. Well, why aren't you working any old time? <laughs> we are glad to help with the war effort by taking the place in the munitions factory and at the workbench of our men at the front. But it is work, and we work hard, work hard. When a man gives his wife, his wife money for housekeeping. If you was my wife, you'd be lucky to get a penny. Hey, if you were a husband, she'd need all the luck she could get. That's right, that gentleman's right. And we don't want luck, and we don't want charity. I know girls what's working in munitions factories, getting wages half as much as what the men used to get paid for the same job. Now that's not right, and no one can say that it is. Equal pay for equal work, that's all we're asking. Equal pay for equal work.
impressed. Glad to hear it. Maybe we could go to a quiet little place and have tea together. Well, I normally do take tea after the meetings, yes. Great. Why? Don't you approve? I like people who stand up for their rights. I fought for the peasants in Mexico. Really? The busy life you've led. Well done. Well done, Mr... Uh, um... Jones. Indiana Jones. Well done, Mr. Jones. Mrs. Kemp was rather nervous tonight. She'd never spoken in public before. But she'll be all right now, thanks to you. Hello, Vicky. Don't forget that that piece you're going to write for the Dreadnought is due in next week. Yes, of course. Mr. Jones, you have struck a better blow for freedom than if you'd spent a whole year in the trenches. Well, as a matter of fact, that you... <clears throat> I've joined the Belgian army. The Belgian army? Vous parlez français, alors? Oui, je le parle couramment. Wirklich? Sie werden mir gleich noch sagen, dass Sie auch Deutsch sprechen. Ja, 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 natürlich. Ich spreche ja viele Sprachen. Anche l'italiano, no? <laughs> Se si parla il francese e lo spagnolo, l'italiano non è poi difficile imparare. The module number, sir. Da hoi nem. <laughs> Ni vecca ha haft en cosmopolitic ut extet. Er det for optimistigt attruat ni prata svenska? Inte als. Jankares mjuka. Ook Stockholm er een van mijn favorieten daar. Kijk niet pas dat ik zie die sas, zes en die esos, kijk zijn alada. Nee, alle protimoteron krijgen tu orhaisen, tu sutos gas es die pointicoteron. Wat wil zeggen Anna Alluchia al Arabia, Alluchia tunga di majara alla tarafuha. Elogia, el Arabia, hia elogia, ta almatuha andama, di Egipto, ila al Kahira. Queruch, o is in riole anabid, redich, hepwot. What language is that? You mean your name is Jones, yet you don't speak Welsh? <laughs> 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 well, my mother was Welsh, and she used to always speak to us in Welsh when we were children. Mm. I'd run out of everything else. And you did pretty well. My father was a Scotsman, but mostly spoke medieval English. Well, my father's a diplomat, and we used to travel with him when we were children. And he used to always talk to us in whatever language of the country we were in. Mm. My father felt the same way. When I was ten, he went around the world giving lectures, and my mother and I went with him. I'm surprised we never met. Maybe we didn't. Didn't know it. Mm. We had a terrible time with the camel drivers in Egypt. So did we. My tutor wouldn't pay what they asked, and they took us to the pyramids. And I, I left you there? That's what they did to us. <laughs> the moon's out. That means no more Zeppelin tonight. Then, sweetheart. Are you all right? My shoes come off. Here, let me put it back on for you. Edie, don't make a nuisance of yourself. That was a horrid fall. Edie, can't you see in the ladies' way? Come Mom, on. Mom, I want to go home. But you can't, and it wouldn't do you no good if we did, because there ain't nothing to eat. You don't have any food. We'll be all right, miss. We don't want to bother nobody. We'll be all right. We... If there's anything we can do... Just please don't speak kind to me, sir. Because if you do... <laughs> There's a stall over the other side of the park. We can get a cup of tea. That's, that's a good idea. You want a cup of tea, Edie? And a bun. I want a bun, too. <laughs> Thanks. Mouseman joined up a year ago. He sent me money every week, regular as clockwork. 
Four weeks ago, it stopped. I can't pay the rent, miss. That's the trouble. The landlord says he's going to turn us out. I, I know there's been a lot of casualties where he is. So, you haven't had any money in four weeks? I, I went to the Soldiers and Sailors Association yesterday. They said they'd come and see me tomorrow, so they might be able to do something. But just in case they can. Oh, no, thank you, sir. I ain't never taken charity. I'm not starting now. My Tom wouldn't like it. Charity? No, no, that... That never entered my mind. I, I was thinking more of a loan. Just to tide you over so that you can pay your rent. Oh, I don't know, miss. How, how could I... Well, the young lady could write down her name and address. Yes, yes, of course. And as soon as you get everything sorted out, you can pay me back. Oh, no, sir, that's too much. Edie? Georgie? Come on, kids. You're going home. You've got a really nice young gentleman there, miss. Come on. Yes. They don't half talk funny. Well, he's an American. Oh, well, that explains it. Thank heaven you thought of calling it a loan. My mother taught me when we were in China that it's very important for people to save face. Even if they are starving. Is this it? Yeah. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. I'd like to see you again. Would you? But I have to go to Oxford tomorrow. Oh. Well, good night then. Good night. But I was going to ask you to go with me. To Oxford? Yeah. I can't. I'm on duty. Well, good night then. But I get off work at one o'clock. Seymour won't mind having a complete stranger in person half the night. Of course she won't. I told you. I sent her a telegram. Yes, but she didn't have any time to write back and say, no, thank you. She wouldn't do that. I told her you're a friend of mine. She's... It's kind of hard to explain. She's almost family. Since my mother died, she knows me better than anyone else. I thought you said she was your tutor. Well, yes, but it was more than that. She taught my father when he went to Oxford. And when we went around the world, she came with us. I was only 10 years old, but she treated me like an Oxford University scholar. But almost everything I know, I owe to her. I hope she likes me. Miss Seymour, this is Miss Prentice. How do you do? I'm afraid this is a terrible imposition. Not at all. Do come in. Henry, I've just received a letter from your father. Very distressed, because you said that you had joined the revolution in Mexico. So what are you doing here? I came to join up. I've never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. Well, Ned wrote to me from Egypt. He's fighting this war. And I think I should, too. Mr. Lawrence is a great deal older than you. And his country is at war with Germany. Yours isn't. You will go back home and finish your education. And if America enters the war, then possibly that will be the time to consider whether... It's too late. I've joined the Belgian army. They've accepted me, and that's the end of it. Have you told your father? What? Well, no, not yet. In that case, you will go into my study, sit down at my desk, and write a letter to your father telling him what you have done. But, well, Miss Seymour, it's... Very minute, Henry. Yes, Miss Seymour. I'll show you to your room, Miss Prentice, and then perhaps you'd like a cup of tea.
remember your father very well. I gave him a sort of crammer's course in Balkan history, so of course he was sent to Egypt instead. <laughs> I've never had much opinion of the Foreign Office. Ah, oh, Henry. Is that the letter? Yeah. Give it to me. I'll see that it's posted. Huh. Would you like a cup of tea? Thank you. I've been invited to a dinner party this evening. Might be interesting. Winston Churchill will be there. Isn't he in France? He's on leave, I imagine. Brilliant mind. Remarkable military strategist. His judgment is not always sound, of course. Certainly not about women's suffrage. A great many people were wrong about women's suffrage, including the suffragettes. Oh. Well, but who's Winston Churchill? Didn't you agree with women's suffrage, Miss Seymour? I certainly don't believe that throwing stones and burning down politicians' houses is the right way to prove your fitness to take part in the government of the country. Until a woman did those things and went to prison and nearly died for their beliefs, no one took any notice. But was it the right kind of notice? My dear young lady... Please don't call me that. I'm not a dear young lady, yours or anybody else's. I am a woman, and as an intelligent woman, I have a right to vote. If you don't believe that, then you have no business teaching anyone history, literature, or even how to boil an egg. That's a very spirited young woman. It's all right, I'm packing. Why? Because I was so rude. She likes you. Oh, she can't possibly. One thing about Miss Seymour, she doesn't shock easily. She wondered if we'd like to go to the dinner party. Really? Do you want to? Sure. I just hope no one mentions women's suffrage. <laughs> <laughs> but in Mr. Asquith's case, I would recommend rather longer. <laughs> My father says you either love or hate. I've known to suffer in the trenches from German superiority in the air. We must build more airplanes. We must have an efficient air ministry. Personally, I think there should be a general election on a motion of no confidence in the conduct of the war. Oh, I entirely agree with you. But if this government continues to deny the vote to soldiers who are serving in France, what kind of a democracy would that be? What kind of a democracy is it now when half the population are not allowed to vote simply because they're women? I fear that you are using the privilege of charming women everywhere and changing the subject. Well, speaking of changing the subject... You're talking about the right to vote. You say that soldiers deserve it, and so they do, but so do women. My dear young lady... You are confusing two very different issues. Well, speaking of different issues... What absolute tosh! It's exactly the same issue. Anyone of whatever sex... Speaking of sex... ...who has no voice of the government of the country is not a citizen, but a slave. That is a very spirited young lady. <laughs> Miss Seymour, my behavior last night was quite unpardonable. I was your guest, I was there as your guest, and I embarrassed you. There's really no excuse except that my mother was a suffragette. She was put in prison, went on hunger strike, was forcibly fed, and has been an invalid ever since. And when I heard Mr. Churchill being so... so dismissive... In your place, I would have done exactly the same. But the trifle... <laughs> Forgive me. Henry was a remarkable boy and shows every sign of growing up to be a remarkable man. He certainly has a tremendous respect for you, but I think he thinks quite rightly that I've now let him down. 
Good morning, Henry. Did Emily see you? Yes. I hope you like a four-minute egg. I've taught her not to cook any other kind. Coffee? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Deeds, not words. <laughs> 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 On my right is University College. Now that was my father's college. I believe it was Shelley's too. Hail to the blithe spirit. Oh, to the west wind? Skylar. What happened to him? Shelley, he was drowned off the coast of Italy. Can't be too careful. <laughs> Please, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you likely to be called up, Mr. Jones? I'm not sure, sir. I guess any day now. And presumably you volunteer, even though America has not yet entered the war. And what do your mother and father think of it? Well, my mother died three years ago. I'm so sorry. I just felt that there was something that was wrong, and that I should get in there and do something about it, no matter what. No matter what the cost. Mother knows all about that. Vicky said that you were a suffragette. Yes. And that they put you in prison and treated you pretty badly. They treated her horribly, much worse than the ordinary prisoners. But the ordinary prisoners weren't on hunger strikes. They weren't force-fed either. Yes, it was pretty bad. It was so painful and humiliating. Being tied down and <clears throat> having a tube forced down your throat. And uh, the worst thing of all was Hearing the others scream and know it was your turn next. How did you get through it? Well, it was like fighting a war. We had a great sense of comradeship, and I thought of my husband who backed me all the way, although it was very damaging to his career, having a suffragette as a wife. And I remembered Vicky, and I thought it will all be worthwhile. If my girl can have a say in the government of the country like any other intelligent human being. And if I can live the life I want to live. Within reason. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> oh, good tea.
was all eager delight. Her eyes were here, there, everywhere, as they approached its fine and striking envoys, and afterwards drove through those streets which conducted them to the hotel. She was come to be happy, and she felt happy already. Thank you, Miss Seymour. I didn't realize how much I needed a holiday. Please, come and stay any time. Thank you. Henry, do you know when you'll be called up? Soon, I guess. Well, let me know. I'll come and see you off. Excellent, Vicky. It makes it clear that we are not asking for special terms, only common justice. Well done. I wonder, though, does it need a more catching title, do you think? Deeds? Not words? Ah, Mr. Jones, isn't it? Good idea. What do you think, Vicky? Uh, well, I'll think about it. Good to see you, Mr. Jones. Indy. Remy has her call up papers. never love anybody else as much again, but I can't marry you. But why? Because I want to be a writer, a journalist. But what's that got to do with it? I want to be an archaeologist. But that's exactly my point. A man can marry and have a career, but a woman can't. At least not until she's established. I do want to have children one day, but not now. Not yet. You see, my life's just beginning. And to get married now would be like putting a stopper on it all. All that energy and ambition just shut up inside marriage. It, it doesn't have to be like that. But it is. Well, if you really love me, then... I do. And there's another thing, too. What we feel now for each other is something, something so strong, but the war could go on for another two or, or three years. And when it's over, we could be two different people. Don't you see, it wouldn't be fair on either of us to, to make promises now that we wouldn't be able to keep. Please understand. It's not too difficult to understand. Turning me down. Indy, please. It's all right. It's probably all for the best. Besides, in three days' time, we'll be in France anyway. Indy.
long will you be in La Havre? How long, I guess. I keep the training short these days. I mind you write to me. And your father. I will. And please, Henry, don't take any stupid risks. Just to show off. I'll try not to. Goodbye, my darling. See you later. 